Hey, man. What's up, brothers and sisters? So, <clears throat> welcome back to the show. Welcome back to this channel. I am Joe the Street Preacher, just in case you didn't know. And today, we are talking about there's a right and a wrong way to baptize somebody. Um, I've already showed you the right way. I showed you uh, a video where um, my first two videos before this, if you go back on this video, go to the home page, click on video. And uh, when you click on video, scroll down when you see this video right here, you see the video, two videos that's under it. It says the truth about baptism. And then it says the truth about baptism part two. I would advise you to look both of them, to look at both of those videos first. Um, after you look at those videos, then look at this video because those two videos are the right way to baptize somebody. Those are the right way. The video today is the wrong way to baptize somebody. Hey, y'all remember that song back in the days by Keith Sweat? I'm talking about like back in the late 80s, early 90s, Keith Sweat had a song called There's a Right and a Wrong Way to Love Somebody. That was a very powerful song back then, <clears throat> dealing with uh, relationships. Um, a lot of people was going through some bad relationships, especially women, and they could relate to those songs. When you think about it like this, look how that song fit a situation. There's a right way and a wrong way to love somebody. Um, when a man gets mad at his wife or even his girlfriend and he put physical hands on her, he hits on her jaw or he hits on her ribs, sends her to the hospital, and at the end of the day when you ask him do he love his wife or he love his girlfriend, he tell you yes. <laughs> My friend, that is the wrong way to love somebody. When you have a man that is married to his wife, and his wife respect him, she look up to him, she cherish him, she trust him, and he betrays that trust by sleeping with another woman. She finds out that he's been unfaithful, it breaks her heart, sometimes it even causes her to, to want to commit suicide because she can't take it. And at the end of the day, you ask him, do you love your wife? And he turns around and says, yes, I love my wife. Huh. My brother, that is the wrong way to love somebody. The right way to love somebody, the right way to love your wife is to cherish her, to adore her, to protect her, to take care of her, and to be faithful to her, and to not to want to hurt her or abuse her. That's the right way. That's the way my mama taught me. That's the way my generation taught me. That's the right way to love somebody. So I thought about that song, and I thought about this baptism. And I said, well, I already put up the right way to baptize. The right way, today, right now, I'm gonna show you the wrong way to baptize somebody. We need to know this. Every one of us need to know this. We need to know it the right way. How you determine what's right and wrong? When you read through this, and it tells you how to baptize, that's the right way. When it give you the instructions, to baptize is to submerge somebody underwater, that is the right way. Somebody sprinkling on you is the wrong way. Why is it wrong? Because that's not in scripture. That's not what the word baptize means. So therefore, that's the wrong way. So that's what we're gonna see today. We're gonna watch these videos of these people baptizing people that I don't, I don't agree that should be baptized at this moment. That they're gonna be baptizing them the wrong way. Look at this video right here. Amin, 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 
Asta mare a zis, da, uite, mi-i cu mine. Ați să iau zona cu și Alexandre, a gălit mami sa ta. Amin. A zis, a ta. Amin. A spus, a zis, a ta. Amin. Asta mare a zis, da, uite, mi-i Man, now that was crazy. They dipping that boy in that water like you dip french fries in a bowl of ketchup. That's crazy, man. That is the wrong way to baptize somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nowhere in scripture that somebody was baptized like that. That is just straight foolishness. You know, I, I feel sorry for the little babies that gotta go through that because to them that is terrifying to be lift up in the air and to be dunked head first in the water. That's terrifying. And for the parents that is doing that, you're doing that because of the lack of knowledge. Because you're not reading your Bible. You're listening to Father Frank, you're listening to Father Bill, you're listening to this priest, you're listening to that Pope, and, and, and you're listening to people that are not following the scriptures. They are following the traditions of the other popes that came up with this way, which is not the way of God. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys, man. This is, this is dangerous, and we're going to see how dangerous this is when you're doing things the wrong way. See, this is what happened when you have a generation, when you have church folks, that's just church folks. They don't read their Bible. They don't study their Bible. They don't learn the word of God for themselves. You know, they trust and rely and depend on these people with collars and these people with these fancy titles. I'm the Pope, I'm the Father, I'm Bishop this, I'm preacher that, and stuff like that. You have to know your word. You have to make sure that the person, this is why Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you because there are men out there that will deceive you, that will lead you the wrong way. And it is dangerous to go the other way. If you do it God's way, it's not dangerous because it's God's way. God is the one that prepared that way. But if you do opposite of what God said, that is dangerous. Look how dangerous that can be. Look at this video. Look at this. Look at they dipping them head first. Do you know dipping a child head first like that, the water can get in their nose. That's dangerous. Oh, you don't think so? Okay, watch Six. this. Thousands are urging the Orthodox Church to abolish traditional baptism rituals in Romania after a six-week-old baby died following a ceremony. The child suffered a cardiac arrest on Monday in the northeastern city of Suceava after being fully immersed in holy water three times by a priest. Paramedics resuscitated the child and placed him on a ventilator, but he died in hospital a few hours later. The child's father says doctors found 110 milliliters of liquid in his lungs, with the priest now under investigation for manslaughter. The boy was crying, but the priest immersed him three times in water and he inhaled water, the distraught parent told local paper monitor Olde Sucheava. The baby had blood on his nose. I put him face down to get the water out, the father said. He didn't recover. Local broadcaster Antenna 3 further reported that the child was born prematurely and was extremely fragile. Man, yeah, that, that, is, that is so terrible. The, the way, I don't, I don't know how you could be a mother and a father at this event and to see this man tossing your child all the way up in the air and dunking him down in that water like that. I don't know how that's okay. That, that child was terrified, terrified, terrified of going so high and dumping down into the water. And I was just telling you, that's dangerous because water can get in his nose because he's upside down and his nostrils is this way. So when he go up, that water gets in his nostril and that can get in his lungs and that can kill him. And that's exactly what happened. That baby died at that baptism. He died. That priest that is under investigation for manslaughter because he killed that child. I, I know he didn't willfully do it, but he did it, he did it out of his negligence. Why? Because he's doing things the wrong way. That is not how God said it. And God never said to baptize any infant. That's why it's important to know why you're getting baptized and how can you get baptized. You gotta be at an at a age where you know the difference between right or wrong. That's an account of ability. You have to know that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins. You have to acknowledge that you're a sinner and you have to realize that you need to change your life. 
you confess your sins to God, not to Father Frank, not to Father Bill, not to Father Mike, but you confess your sins to God. And then now you want to make it public, right? You want to go and get baptized. Uh, one week, one week old, two week old, one month, two months, eight months, nine months, one year. Can I do that? They don't have that capability. They don't have that understanding. And see, because we don't read the scriptures, because we don't read the scriptures, we, we are misinformed. We're making the wrong decision and it's causing harms to our loved ones because we fail to learn the right way. We want to do it everybody else way. We want to follow traditions instead of the commandments of God. God gave us instructions right in here. He gave us the instructions. He said for us to get baptized. Look, the word baptized is to be submerged into the water. Not to be dunked head first into the water and a little child. There's no examples of any young young child, a young baby like that getting baptized in the, in the, in the Bible. That's, the Bible is for our examples. There's no examples of it, but you know, you don't know if there's examples or not. And when I say you, I'm not talking to you, the viewers that's always on here. See, y'all sitting in the front row. You know, people like Wanda, uh, her fiance Tommy, Triple D, Sheena, uh, uh, Diane, uh, and um, you know Simon K, Carl Morgan. It's a whole cat. It's it's a whole bunch of y'all. You know I can't name everybody name because I'd be doing that all day. <laughs> but I, I I am familiar with who watch this channel and who leave comments. You know, and I have a memory about that April and and all these other people. But the thing is, I'm not talking to you guys. You guys are sitting on the front row. I'm talking to the ones that's creeping in the back and sitting in the back row, the spectators, the one that's coming in there to find out, yeah, what he preaching about now. He's so judgmental. He think, he always talking about this is wrong and this is right. Think he know everything. D those are the ones, uh, d the ones that be leaving little comments on my, um, on my, on, on, on my channel saying, oh, see, you're not a Christian because you don't, you too judgmental. You, you, you don't preach love. You don't talk about love. See them, they let me know they don't read their Bible. You know, they don't, they don't read scriptures. If you think that Jesus was walking around smiling all day and telling everybody he loved them and he never corrected nobody, he never rebuked nobody, he didn't go in there and snatch the tables out of the, out of the temple and threw them outside on the street. If you don't know that part of Jesus, when people came up to him and told him, what about the, the people over there that died in that building? He said, he, he said, what, what they, they said, what they sent us? He said, I tell you what, you will likewise perish if you don't repent. In other words, you're going to be destroyed too if you don't repent. See, they don't know that Jesus. They, they preach, they ain't preaching about that side of Jesus. You just talk about the lovely side. You know, that's what, that's what get everybody caught up. The problem is, Jesus says, right there, Jesus says, he told his disciples, the ones that's following him, he says to take heed that no man deceive you. That is on us to make sure that we are not tricked by anybody. Well, how can we go? How can we go about not being tricked? How do we know the right way or the wrong way? By reading this. That's how we know the right way or the, or the wrong way. This is the instructions. If we follow this, we're going the right way. If we don't follow that, we're going the wrong way. The problem is we put a lot of trust and a lot of faith in these people who say that they're men of God, who say that they have these titles, they went to seminar school, they got this diploma and things like that. So we trust them that they know what they're talking about. So no matter what they say, I'm going to do it this way. They say my child should be baptized at one week old, two week old, three week old. I'm going to go ahead and do it. They say they got to dip them head first in the water. I'm going to go ahead and do it because they say that they went to school, they got college, they got a congregation, everybody goes there, people been doing this, so I'm gonna go trust them and I'm gonna go do it. See, you're following the traditions of men, the Bible tells us about that. You're following the traditions of men and you're transgressing the commandments of God. But you don't know that because you don't read. You know what he says? Look what he says, I'm gonna read this. We're in Hosea. Hosea. Look what God says here. No, we're in Proverbs. Look at this, I'm gonna read this to you. He said, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You see that? The Bible says, Jesus says, the Lord says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. That don't get the word man caught up because when you look up the word man in the Hebrew, it means human being. So this message is not just for the man. God is not just singling out the man. This message is for human beings. And the last I checked, 
male and female were both human beings so with that being said god is saying there's a way that seemed right to human beings me and you there's a way that seems right but the end thereof, the end results are the way of death is what the scripture says them people that decided to baptize that baby the one video we just saw the one who died the, the mother and the father who made a decision who made a choice to baptize their baby and to go over here to this to this priest thinking that he was going to baptize them right when they made that appointment they was happy i'm sure they rejoiced they went and told their family they went and told their friends they invited everybody to come out to his christening to his baptism and things like that that way at the end of, at the beginning of the day it seemed right it seemed like this was the right thing to do. We're going to get our son baptized today. We're going to get him Christian today. We're going to all, we're going to get a certificate. We're going to always remember this day. It seemed right. But what does the Bible say the end results is? Look at it. The end results are the ways of what? Death. That little boy is dead. Can you imagine at the end of the night how that mother felt? how that father felt. See, we don't know what happened behind that. We don't know if the mother went and, and, and turned the an alcoholic or the father turned an alcoholic or they both pursued drugs or they both hanged themselves. We don't know. We don't know the end results of that. We know what happened to that little baby. The little baby died. You know why the little baby died? Because mom and daddy made a wrong choice. What was the wrong choice? Putting their faith and their trust in the traditions of men. Trusting that priest that he knew what he was doing and he didn't know what he was doing. That was a wrong thing. You don't need to baptize a little baby. You don't need to baptize a little baby. You don't need to do that. That's what the scripture tell you to do that. We're not supposed to do that. Why are we doing that? There's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That little boy is dead and he is gone. The good news is, the great news is, the wonderful news is, is that little baby is in heaven. Why? Because he was innocent. He wasn't a liar. He wasn't a thief. You remember I showed you in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, he give you the list of the people that ain't going to make it in. That baby ain't on that list. He ain't no homosexual. He ain't a liar. He don't cuss. He don't hate. He don't do none of those things. So when a baby dies like that, a baby goes straight to heaven. That baby made it all the way into heaven. That baby's at a place that me and you is trying to get to, heaven. He already made it. He's safe. He hit home base. His last breath here was his first breath in heaven. He's in heaven right now. Hopefully, the mother and father get their life together and start reading the scriptures and learn the right ways of God and start following God because if they do, they will see their baby again. There's a right and a wrong way to baptize somebody. It is. Look at this video right here. Watch this video. It's Wednesday night. It's 815 Central. Alex Jones here live. The reason I'm going live is we have two particular pieces of bizarre news that are important that are up on Infowars.com, Newswars.com, and PrisonPlanet.com. And one of those is shock video Catholic vampire pe uh, priest attacks baby and this he's like slapping the baby in front of the pre the parents and the parents are getting back in their face uh the video you've got to watch it in slow-mo on infowars.com it's just crazy this nosferatu looking bizarre crazy old man with the husband and the young beautiful wife with the baby and he's slapping the baby in the face hard i mean you you hear the slap so that's coming up first here. But first, ladies and gentlemen, here is a senior Catholic priest in Italy uh, abusing a baby, in my opinion, right in front of their parents. Here it is. <laughs> Oh, 
And so the father, we want to see the rest of the video, nobody seems to have it, pulls the baby away, pushes the demon creature away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if that ain't crazy, then I don't know what crazy is. I don't have a clue on what crazy is, if that ain't crazy. Man. Can you imagine taking your baby boy or even baby girl? You, you take them to go get baptized to this priest who you trust in, who you put your faith in, he know what he's doing. This is this is this is a man of God. And you got your baby in his hands. And your baby is crying. You yourself ain't ain't spanking your baby. You just letting letting him cry, let him get his cry out. You, you might not even don't even believe in discipline, especially a little baby like that, right? But but here you had this grown man. You had this grown man, a stranger. Because your baby is crying, he opens up his hand and slaps your child right in front of your face. <laughs> but they had the wrong. They had the right people in there that day. Because if you'd have had some crazy folks in there, they would have tore that whole place up. This man has smacked my baby. Who the world he think he is? <laughs> you know. But uh, that's uh, that's crazy, man. You know how he sat there and smacked that baby, and 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 and, and felt like what he was doing wasn't nothing wrong with it. You know that's that's crazy, man. That's that's why you can't today's in today's generation you can't just put your children in the hands of strangers for nothing. You can't drop your kids off at babysitters that you don't know. You can't go online and hire people and just have them come to your house and leave them at your house. See, they used to be able to do that in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, and the 80s. But around the 90s, man, stuff start changing. People's hearts start changing. You know, people's heart grow, grows cold. They don't care about nobody. They don't care about children. You got a lot of child molesters that will rape your children. You got a lot of people that will beat your children. You can't put your child in the hands of a stranger for nothing. But back to what I was saying, these things, <clears throat> that's why it's good to know the Word of God. That's why it's good to read the Word of God and be instructed by the Word of God because the Word of God will lead you in the right direction. You know, if you read your Bible, you'll learn that ain't nowhere in the, in the Bible that a baby is to be baptized. So that's, that's the wrong error right there. If you would have read your scriptures, look, look what the Bible says. Look at this. <clears throat> Number one, when we don't when we don't read our word, God, God has a, a a problem with us because when we don't read the word, we don't understand the word. We don't live by the word, so we live by our own thoughts. We, we do what we want to do, all right? And God has a problem when we do that. Look what He says here in verse one. He says, "Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord had controversy with the inhabitants of the land. God got a controversy with the people on the land, the people that's inhabiting it, the land that He gave them." They ain't following his ways, and God got a controversy with the people down there on the land. That's what he's saying. And he's going to tell you why. Because there's no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. People don't have knowledge of this. People ain't reading this. They ain't reading this. They don't know this. They spend a lot of time watching movies. They spend all day watching uh, TikTok and Instagram. And even YouTube, especially if it's something that, that ain't important, but they ain't spending no time in the Word of God. So without the Word of God, they ain't got no direction. And God does not like that you don't know His Word. God don't like that. He's telling you. He got, in, he got a controversy with the people in the land that's not reading His Word. There's no mercy. There's no truth. Everybody lying. And they, they don't have no knowledge of God. Look what he says. Verse 2, he said, by swearing, by lying, these are the things that the people are doing that God don't like. He said, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touch of blood. And you see all these things that he named? See, when Joe, the street preacher named that you can't be doing these things, people get mad at me. They say, I'm too judgmental. Who do I think I am? I don't have no PhD. No PhD. I'm, I don't have no big church. Who am I to say we're not supposed to be stealing? We can't do this. We can't do that. They get mad at me when I say that. But you know why they get mad at me? Because they don't know. 
See, the people that know scripture, and when they hear me say that, they say amen. You know why they say amen? Because they had already read that in the word. They already been taught that in church. But the people that don't know God, that don't know the ways of God, that don't have the knowledge of God, they get mad. He said, verse three, he said, therefore shall the land mourn. Because of these things, the land is gonna mourn. It's not gonna be happy. In other words, bad things are gonna happen. Why? Because we're not, we don't have the knowledge of God. We ain't walking right with God. He says, <clears throat> He says, therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Okay, so then he tell you about all the bad things that can happen. But look at this in verse six. Look at that, verse six. Look what God says. This is very important. He says, my people, the people that he created, because everybody that he's created, that's his people. He says, my people are destroyed for what? The lack of knowledge. We're destroying ourselves for the lack of knowledge. The people in the early part of the video took their son, took their baby to a priest for him to dunk him upside down in the water over and over and over again. And because they don't have the knowledge of scripture, they thought, they assumed, they, it seemed like that was the right thing to do. And they destroyed their child's life for the lack of knowledge. Look what he said. He says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Why? Because thou hast rejected knowledge. People reject this. They don't want to read this. They'll read novels, fiction. They'll read uh, all type of documentary novels, but they ain't gonna read that word. They reject that. You tell them to come to church, they reject that. They flip on YouTube, on my channel. They see Amber, oh, click, 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 click. But I put on there Truth of Baptism, they go, oh, nah, I don't, I, don't, I don't wanna see that. I put anything about Jesus, they'll keep strolling. They don't want to watch that. Lack of knowledge. You rejecting. You ain't rejecting me. I, I, know, I, I already know that God has a few that's going to come and listen to what he has to say. And I'm fine with that. He says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Why? Because they has rejected knowledge. And look what he says. I will also reject you. You, you got to be careful rejecting the counsel, the wisdom, the instructions, the knowledge of God. Because God said, see, God said that. If I don't show you these scriptures that I said, oh, you wrong, you misjudging people, you can't tell people God go reject them. God is love, he would never do that. He says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject you that thou shall be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. Imagine me telling you, you know, if you reject God, God said he'll reject you and your children. Oh, preacher Joe, you can't be saying stuff like that. That ain't right. You wrong for saying that. Who you think you is? You so judgmental. <laughs> People crack me up. You know, I don't even get mad. I usually get mad at that. Sometimes I might respond to them because I, I need to correct them to show them, the, you know, that what they're saying is wrong and show them a few things in the Bible what it says. But I used to get mad very first time I heard this was years ago when people used to try to tell me something. I said, man, that's in the Bible. That ain't in the Bible. And I go pick up the Bible and open it up and show it to me. I didn't know that was in there. I said, I know you didn't know it was in there. I could tell what you were saying. You didn't know it was in there. You talking, you don't know what you're talking about. And the reason why you don't know what you're talking about because you don't read your word. You got to read your word. That's why God gave me this channel. Because I've read the word. And now I'm trying to do what? Share the word with you. Why? So that you may know. God says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That is so true. You know, we're destroying ourselves. That man sit there, man, and slap that little baby, man. I don't know what he was thinking of. About that, man. That is crazy. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing the mother and the father, the mother see the father slap. She might not like that, but she say in the back of her head, well, you know, that's, that's the dad. That's the way he gonna discipline. Or even vice versa. But when you see a stranger, a stranger <laughs> who's supposed to be a priest, a man of God, open up his hands wide open and pow, so hard that the, 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 the sound ring all the way across the room. You see the father? <laughs> right before he slapped, watch that video again. Go back later and, and rewind the video. Right before the priest slapped him, the father looked at the, the wife and was smiling. He was laughing because the baby was crying. So he probably looked at the mom, the, the mother and said, oh yeah, he, 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 he cried, he don't want to go to, he, he don't want to get baptized or something like that. But when that man slapped the, um, the baby, the father turned around, his face went like this. 
<laughs> you could see the side of his face. His face was was upset. You know, he was mad. And, and it took him a it took him a little a little to respond because I guess it ain't set in yet that this man just smacked my son. <laughs> this man just smacked my baby. He open slapped my son. You know, and then he started grabbing him and, and pulling him away. And this man trying to hold on to the baby. You know, he trying to he trying to hold on to he, he, he want to get he want to baptize that baby on the on the, any means necessary that day. Here's another one. Look at this one. Here's another one. Look at this one. Watch this one. This one, this one, this one is, is crazy too. Watch this one. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh! Now, you could have broke that baby's nose. A baby's nose is very fragile. When, when you're sitting there and you, and, you, and you push that baby the wrong way and that baby, you're not careful with what you're doing. You're like a beginner. And you allow that baby to go head first into that thing. You could have, that baby could have broke his or her nose or could have or received uh, head damage, brain damage. You know, they're so young, they're so tender. You know, it's easy for bones to be broken, stuff to be fractured. You know, so the, the thing is, is that it, we're putting our babies in the hands of these people because we trust in these people to do something that God never told us to do from the beginning. And these bad things are happening, man, and it's terrible. That's terrible, man. I, I, man, that's terrible. If, if, you're, if you're thinking about going to, to a Catholic church to go get your child Christian or baptized, baptized, watch this video and make a decision on your own. Should you or should you not do it? Go back and watch the truth about baptism, part one, part two. And also read your Bible. Read your Bible about everything that has something to do with baptism and see if that's the, if that's the way to do it. Because if, if the Bible don't tell you to do it that way, don't do it that way. You ain't held accountable for doing something that God never said do. You only held accountable for doing something, for not doing something that God said to do. Amen. Uh, also, here's another one. This is the last one I'm going to show right here. This one right here, <laughs> this was really crazy. Th this man actually took their baby and was dumping them in the water like he was trying to kill them. Just dumping them in the water. This looked like a horror movie. He's dumping a little baby in the water. And when the mom tried to grab her baby, this man actually preached, turned her away, and still tried to dunk the baby like he was trying to kill the baby. This one's crazy. This one's terrifying. Watch this video right here. The baptism of a baby turned very violent at a church in Russia over the weekend. We want to warn you that the video may be disturbing to watch. So here it is. Take a look at this. You can see the one-year-old boy crying. You can hear him while Father Foyty starts to immerse him in a baptismal font. When the boy does not cooperate, the father uses force to continue the ritual. You can also see him fend off from the boy's mother who was trying to get her son back. Well, the father said the mother was overreacting. But the following day, the Russian Orthodox Church released a statement. It says Father Foyty has now been banned from performing baptism for a year. Well, the tragic daycare fire that killed five children in Pennsylvania is now prompting a lot of changes to prevent this from happening yet again. <laughs> That's crazy, ain't it? <clears throat> I'm outside now. It's cold. Boy, it's cold out here. I mean, uh, I don't know if I told y'all. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, I'm at a place called Vince Lombardi Service Plaza. This is where the truck drivers, us truck drivers, that's on the road. We pull over here, you know, to wash up. They got, if you've seen in the beginning of the video, they got a lot of places for you to eat. And uh, this is where you go wash up at. <coughs> and this is where Joe the Street's preacher sometimes uh, has decided to make a video. I never really made a video here, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of like it. But anyway, so we just saw that, man, that that priest, what he did, you know, he, he wanted to baptize that ch that baby by any means necessary and he wasn't going to let the mother or nobody stop him from dunking that child in the water. It's dangerous putting your baby in the hands of a person like that. That's crazy. I mean, like I told y'all before, we don't need to be baptizing babies anyway because, see, they ain't going to do that to an adult. 
they ain't going to do that to an adult. And those are the ones that need to be baptized. The ones that's an adult, the ones that's at the age of accountability, that know the difference between right and wrong. That's the one that's supposed to be baptized, not a little infant. Can you imagine that priest that I showed you earlier that smacked that kid? Can you imagine that parent saying, hey, you know what? We're going to leave him with him and we're going to go go shopping. We're going to leave him with Father Tommy. Or to uh, you listen, I keep saying Tommy because I like to say that name, Tommy. Wanda's fiance, Tommy, don't don't take no offense to that man. I ain't messing with you. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother, man. I thought about that the, day, the other day when I made the video. I said, man, I hope brother Tommy don't think I'm talking about him. I just make a, I just pull a name out of the sky. So, brother, if you got offended, man, I am so sorry. I did not mean that, brother. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'm going to pick another name. You know, that's for, for them people to say, you know, we're going we to put that in uh, Father Michael's uh, uh, care. And we go somewhere. Can you imagine that baby cry what that man would do? If he if he slapped that baby in front of you, what you think he'll do? <laughs> what you think he'll do behind your back? You can't put your baby in people people's hands like that, you know? But anyway, you know, we do these things <coughs> because we lack knowledge. And the reason why we lack knowledge is because we fail to read the word of God. That's the most important thing. That's why God gave it to us. He wants us to read it. He wants us to know it. You remember in a couple of videos when I read that part in, uh, I think it was 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, when it says, verse 15, when it says that these scriptures is able to make you wise. It is. The Bible is able, able to make you wise, make you smart. You know why people do th dumb things today? Because they ain't wise. They ain't smart. Why they ain't wise? Because they ain't reading that word. That's why. God try to deal with every human being on the face of this earth. God, God deals with everybody. He tries to intervene into everybody's relationship. He tries to reach everybody. I'm going to read this to you. And we're going to close out here. We're in Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs is a very wise book. It was written by a man named Solomon. God inspired him to write it. <laughs> and Solomon went through a lot in life, but he also prayed and asked God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of his word. And God gave him wisdom. That's why, it's, why, that's why Proverbs is so wise. But look what he says. <coughs> I'm coughing because it's cold out here and it's aggravating a little cold I got in my, in my chest. But anyway, he says, <coughs> wisdom quiet without. She uttered her voice in the street. Now, when it's saying wisdom, wisdom is the word of God. So it's, it's implying when it says wisdom here, it's talking about the word of God. So it's saying the word of God quiet. When it says without, it's talking about it's talking about outside. The word of God cried outside. She uttered her voice in the streets. Now you say, well, how is the word of God crying out in the streets? You see them preachers? When preachers on the corner, out there with their signs, you know, preaching, preaching, telling people to repent, turn from their sins, and everybody telling me, oh, you too judgmental. Oh, you ain't, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. That is the wisdom of God. That man has been studying his word. God has, God has endowed him with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding his word. God gave him the bonus that these preachers and churches don't have. Because he's standing out there in that corner. He ain't asking for money. He ain't doing it for money. He's doing it because he really want people to repent and to turn away from their sins. Wisdom is crying out in the streets. While we walking by and looking at them and rejecting them and not want to hear them. Or making fun of them. Verse 21, she, which is, the, which is the pronoun for the word of God, she cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttered her words saying, so she's not in the street, not just in the street, but she in front of business offices, she was in front of the White House. You got preachers out there in front of the White House, preaching, right? So he says, uh, verse 22, he's, this is what the word is saying. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? Simplicity, simplicity, the synonym for that is foolishness. God is asking, how long will you fools love foolishness? You love foolishness, but you don't love the word of God. He said, how long will you simple ones love simplicity and the scorners delight in they scorning? Those are the ones who scorning the men of God that's telling them things. You're mocking them. You're scorning them. You're trying to make them look bad. And all they're trying to do is help you. Amen. He says, uh, <clears throat> he says, and hate knowledge and fools hate knowledge. You know, when, when people don't want to hear the word of God, they remember, he says, if you reject his word, he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. And he said, because they reject knowledge, he will also reject them and their children. He said, fools is the one that hate knowledge. Look at his instructions. 
He said, turn you at my reproof. Turn at my correction. This is what God has said through the preachers on the street. He's, God is telling the world, telling the people in the street through that preacher to turn at my corrections. He said, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make known unto you my word. Good God of my God has said that if you turn to me, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to pour my spirit into your body because it's that spirit that caused you to be saved and it's that spirit that will help you and lead you and guide you and also convict you if you think do or say anything wrong it will convict you and lead you to repentance that's that help that jesus was talking about in the book of john we need that holy ghost that's why you got to first repent be sorrowful of your sins be ready to get baptized and once you get baptized that spirit of god will come inside of you, you can't be born again without the water and the spirit and that water he ain't talking about baptism he's talking about the word of god Anyway, we'll get into that another time. But <clears throat> God is telling, he has a message for the nation, for every human being on the face of this earth. He says in verse 23, he says, turn you at my reproof. Turn at my, I'm going to correct you about your sin. I'm going to let you know you shouldn't be lying. I'm going to let you know you shouldn't be stealing. I'm going to let you know you shouldn't be getting drunk. I'm going to let you know you shouldn't be doing drugs. And if you hear this message, all you have to do is turn at my correction. This message is a correction from God. And if you hear and turn to God in prayer, be sorry about your sins, confess your sins, and be willing to turn away from it, God says that he had put his spirit inside of you, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, turn in my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known unto you his words. He's going to make, because he wants you to know his words. And he'll make known unto you his words. He wants you to know his word. That's what he gave it to us for. <clears throat> he said, because I have caught. Now, look at this now. This is the flip side of you rejecting to hear the word of God. He says in verse 24, he said, because I have called and you have refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regard God. See, when a preacher come to you, that's why I should say to the people down there in Kensington. When God sends a man of God, because he sent a lot of Christians out there, a lot of preachers out there that's going in there, and they're telling people about the goodness of God. They're telling people that God loves you and God wants to help you and pull out. And when they say, no, not today, no, I'm not ready, no, I'm good, no, I'm straight, you're not rejecting the preacher. You're rejecting God that sent that preacher because he's the one that's wisdom that is crying out in the streets. And you're rejecting him. God is stretching out a hand. Look what he says right here. He says, <clears throat> because I have called and you have refused, I have stretched out my hand. This is God's way of stretching out his hand out there in Kensington or out there in the, out there in the dope house or, or out there in homosexuality, the life of homosexuality or the life of fornication. God sends somebody to try to tell you about him and he's stretching out his hand. That's God stretching out his hand. God taking that preacher and he's stretching out his hand and he put that preacher in, the, in front of you and God is using his mouth to speak to you, to tell you, to turn at these corrections. But we get mad. We get offended when somebody's trying to correct us. Oh, who are you to tell me I can't be smoking? Who are you to tell me I can't be cussing? You ain't God. God said, don't judge nobody. <laughs> if you understood that scripture, God was talking to the hypocrites that they couldn't judge. He told them first, take the plaque out of your eye. Then you can see clearly to make a judgment. He said, he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. I don't know why we think we can't judge. Judging ain't doing nothing but determine what's right and wrong. If you're telling me that I'm judging, you just made a decision that I that I judge, and in your your philosophy, you think I'm wrong, so you made a judgment. We make judgments every day. The Bible says a tree is known by its fruit. How else are you going to be able to determine if this is an orange tree or an apple tree? You have to make a decision. You have to judge that this no, this is not an orange tree. This is an apple tree. Why? You're able to see the fruit on that tree now we can't condemn nobody i can't tell nobody you're going to hell there's no hope for you i'm sorry that's where you're going i can't, you can't tell nobody that amen so he said because i have called and you refuse to god serious about calling when god is calling you and you rejecting him god don't take that lightly it ain't no different than a police on the corner and he see you across you says yo man come here and you don't come he ain't gonna take that light he gonna be upset like hold up i'm authority i'm telling you to come over here i am like, i'm giving you a direct order to come over here and when you start running you're gonna make him run and then when he when he catch you he's gonna act a fool why because you didn't come when he called you same thing with mom and daddy they call you and you refuse to go 
you in the room playing PlayStation and mom and daddy say, hey, come here, come in the kitchen, I want to talk to you. And you don't come because you're too caught up in the game. Mom and dad going to get mad. They might come in there and spank you or they might take that game out of, out of the, just plug it from the TV and won't let you play with it. Why? Because they called you and you're not listening. That's the same thing with God. God is calling this nation. God, the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave a gift to the world, but people are not stretching forth to grab that gift. The gift is just dangling in your face. God gave it to you, but it ain't going to suit you none if you don't never reach out and take it. And that gift is Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, because I have called and you refused and have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. He said, but you have set at nut all my counsel and with none of you in my proof. He's saying that you, 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 you took my counsel and it didn't mean nothing to you. My reproof, my correction, that didn't mean nothing to you. I mean, he corrected you about stealing. He corrected you about living in fornication. He corrected you about committing adultery. He corrected you about drinking. But you told him that he was judgmental. But you failed to realize that it was me using him to correct you. But you rejected my correction. And that's why this hell is, is happening in your life. Because you rejected the counsel of God. Stop getting caught up in the man. Get, get caught up in the God that sent the man. Amen. He said, but you have said it not my counsel and, and with none of my reproof. He says, I also will laugh at your cal calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. Look what God said. God says, you know what? I don't laugh much. But when your calamity, when your destruction comes, when, when your whole world turn upside down and everything fall apart, and you start praying to me now, I'm going to laugh at you. So you, you, you never knew that. You probably never knew that was in there. See, when we don't read our Bible, we don't know what's in there. This is how God is saying. God is saying, now when you need me, I'm going to laugh at you. We feel only men talk like that. But God talks like that. Look at verse 27. He said, when your fear come as desolation, which is destruction, and your destruction coming as a whirlwind. But boy, you know what a whirlwind come, it tear everything up. And that's how your destruction will come in your life. When distress and anguish come upon you, he said, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. You got to be careful rejecting God so many times he call you. Now when trouble come, you want to call out to him. He says he won't answer. I ain't say that. I ain't, I ain't write that. I'm just telling you what the word of God said. He said, then when they shall call upon me, I will not answer. And they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. God wants you to fear him because he said, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. I want to show you this right quick and we're going to close out right here. <clears throat> Joshua <clears throat> was, was, was the man that stepped up after, after Moses died. After Moses was gone, Joshua stepped up to lead the children of Israel into, uh, into the promised land. And uh, so Joshua is at the head this time, and he's talking. He gathered everybody up. This was the end of the chapter of Joshua because they had already went into Canaan. They defeated their enemies, and he brought them into the promised land. But he is letting them know. He is telling them. Look what he says. Rounded everybody up, and he is talking to everybody in the crowd. And look what he says. He says, now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Be sincere with God. That's what he's telling them. And he says, fear God. For those of you talking about, you ain't supposed to be fearing God. Fear is not God. Fear is not of God. No, anything outside of God that you're afraid of is not of God. Amen. He says, he says fear God, <clears throat> fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Put away these gods. These, a lot of times they had statues and stuff like that, like the Catholic Church do today. All these statue of the Virgin Mary, statue of Jesus, statue of St. Paul, st statue of Guadalupe, statue of this, uh, of this person. These are, these are gods, small gods, and God doesn't want us to do that. Catholic Church is known for that. People coming in and they bowing down on a kneeling bitch and they're praying to this statue. Read Psalms 19, starting like verse 2 all the way to 8 and see how God feels. Psalms 115, verse 2 all the way to verse 8. See how God feels about us praying to statues. God don't like that. He says, uh, so he's letting them know to put away those gods. The one that your, your fathers, your, your family members, the people before us, they were serving those gods and God destroyed them. He said, put away those gods. Look what he says in verse 15. He says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, 
Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say that all the time. In my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We are not going to serve the devil. That's the mindset a man of God or a woman of God should have in their own household. In this house, we're going to serve the Lord. There ain't no cussing in this house. Ain't no watching no movies with cussing in this house. Ain't no music with cussing in it. Ain't no, ain't no fornicating in this house. Ain't no sleepers over in this house. In this house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's the mindset we should have. He's telling them to choose you this day <clears throat> whom you're going to serve. God is asking that same question today. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the devil or are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve the traditions of man or are you going to serve the commandments of God, the instructions of God, the ways of God? Whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the devil or are you on the side of God? Are you on the side of traditions? The Catholic traditions, the things that they put together, that the popes put together and, and print out and make everybody follow those instructions, or are you on the side of the Word of God that gives you the right instructions, the right way that God wants you to do? Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on?